Similar to orcas who use echolocation to detect prey, an ultrasonic sensor uses sound waves to detect objects at a distance. The sensor emits a high frequency sound wave and then measures the time it takes for the waves to bounce off an object in return, determining how far away the object is. This time is then compared to a threshold, and the sensor will then output a high or low voltage signal depending on the detection status of the object in the system. Coming up, I'll share with you two standout features that separates the Atonix UTR series sensor from the rest that you won't want to miss. But first, it's our premier product highlight sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The BEI CHM5 is a new generation of SSI absolute single turn encoders known for the robustness and resilience against shocks and vibrations. Featuring high protection levels of IP65 with an IP67 option available for using a ceiling flange, it offers resolutions of up to 16 bits. With a universal power supply from 5 to 30 volts DC and operational temperatures ranging from negative 20 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius, it includes standard direction and reset inputs along with optional digital or sign incremental outputs for versatile performance. Learn more by visiting mauser.com today. Education, like a stepper motor, breaks down complex subjects into manageable lessons, fostering incremental learning and mastery over time. To learn more about stepper motors, we bring you David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. In the world of control automation, some devices are made to bring information into the system, some devices are made to send controls and activation out of the system so that we can run motors, solenoids, things like that. But there's some devices that are made for nothing more than to give the people working around the system some clue of what's going on. These are called indicator lights. Now sometimes these indicator lights are integrated inside the push buttons so that when you push a start button it turns green or a red light indicates that a motor's running. But some of these are what we call stack or tower lights. They happen to be one of my favorite kind of devices because who doesn't love to turn on lights and see the pretty lights flashing? But there are different kinds of indicator light towers. Usually the two different kinds of electricity that supply these are DC and AC electricity. There's also two different kinds of light bulbs. The light bulbs can be either LED, which are more power efficient, which means that they consume less electricity, and they also tend to last a little bit longer. One of the downsides though is often they are not replaceable individually. So instead we have to buy an entirely new segment. Now these tower lights are often customizable, which means that we can take apart these segments and we can look at the lights inside. Now if these are AC lights, alternating current electricity, then often we can just remove the little light bulb and replace it with another one when it burns out. But usually these LED lights are integrated into a circuit board, and that circuit board inside cannot simply be removed and reinserted. So if we do end up with damage to the light and we need to replace one of the segments, or our system changes and we need to change the color of one of the light segments, we go to the manufacturer, we look at the part number, and we buy a new colored segment that's designed for that style of stack light. But you do have to be careful, because even though two stack lights may look very similar, it may be a completely different light bulb and connection configuration inside. So we need to be absolutely sure that those color connections do indeed match. The wire colors often correspond to the colors of the light segments inside. So we have one common supply for electricity, or one common ground, and the remainder of the wires are designed to allow the electricity to flow through the individual lights, or sometimes buzzer segments, and then proceed back to the common of the power supply so that we can control the indication of the lights individually rather than having them all turn on constantly. This can be great for the operation of machines where we need to be able to see alarms, we need to be able to see the running status, or sometimes we even need to blink the lights at different rates to provide different indications of faults or running status. Andy, back to you. Thank you, David. The Atonix UTR series sensors offer some pretty cool features, one of which is they are able to detect objects up to eight meters away and measure various materials like liquids, solids, or powders. Available in 18 millimeters or 30 millimeters stainless steel bodies, they provide digital and analog or purely digital outputs with analog options supporting current and voltage or current alone. These sensors mitigate false detections through optional foreground, background, and moving average filters, ensuring reliable performance and minimizing downtime. 
They also feature a built-in temperature tracking algorithm to compensate for temperature changes, ensuring accurate distant measurements by filtering out noise and disturbances. The new cylindrical ultrasonic sensor adapts to diverse applications, offering I.O. link, analog, and digital outputs for versatile integration with control systems. Control automation continues to revolutionize our world. To stay updated, check out our other episodes of Automator's Edge, and we'll see you next time.